Okay, let's talk about bonds. So if a company wants to raise money, but they don't want to give away ownership, then they have this other option of issuing a bond. What this does is it borrows money from the public. So for example, this is a McDonald's bond, and it's a thousand dollar bond, which means that McDonald's is wanting to borrow a thousand dollars from the public, and in exchange, they're going to pay back an interest of four and a fourth percent. It's listed right here, four and a fourth percent. And so at the end of 10 years, they're going to repay the thousand dollars. And up until then, every six months, they're going to pay interest on this. So that's what a bond is. So once you have issued a bond, you've got a contract here. You've written on the bond what you promise. They are promising to repay a thousand dollars at four and a fourth percent interest rate. That's your contract that you've made. We're going to call that the contract rate because no matter what, every six months, McDonald's is going to pay back four and a fourth percent times a half a year. And the reason why I say that is because four and a fourth percent is an annualized interest rate and they're going to pay it twice a year. And then at the end of the term, that is at the end of, for example, 10 years, they're going to give back the original $1,000. So that's our contract rate. Now, if the interest rate in the market is still four and a fourth, then this is easy to account for, and I'll tell you why. If the contract rate, the four and a fourth, is equal to the market rate, that is, if you were to go out into the marketplace, you could still get a bond for four and a fourth percent, then this bond will be sold at face value. That means it's just sold for the $1,000. All right, so the way that you'll see that written in accounting problems is you'll say it was sold at one, or it was sold at 100%. So you would say the $1,000 times 100% or times 1 gives you the amount that you would sell this bond for. Somebody would give you $1,000, you'd pay them interest every six months for 10 years, and then you'd repay the $1,000. Very easy to account for. However, market interest rates change daily for a variety of reasons. Supply and demand, contraction of money supply, the Federal Reserve um, changing interest rates to do with um, the, the economy and stimulating the economy. So all these things change our interest rates. So they rarely are exactly the same as what was printed on the bond. So we still pay the same amount every six months, but we tweak the price up front. Here's what I mean. If the contract rate is less than what the market rate is, that is, if you went out into the market, you could get more money well then, would you want a McDonald's bond that paid four and a fourth percent if you could go out into the market and get a bond that was paying, for example, 10 percent? No, this wouldn't be very attractive to you. So in order to sell it, they have to discount it. So we call that a discount. That is, if the contract rate is less than what you could get in the market, it's sold at a discount. The way you would see that written is anything less than 100 percent. So if I write in, for example, 0.97, then I would see that I would sell this bond for $970. Now these calculations are done to exactly arrive at the same answer as what would have happened had this bond paid market interest rate. We're not going to do that calculation. That calculation is actually done through a present value tables, future value tables, but just know that when we arrive at this 97, it was an exact calculation to give the bondholder exactly market interest rate. Okay, so let's look at the third example. Contract rate is greater than market rate. Under this last scenario, this bond becomes very attractive. Now we can get four and a fourth percent, but in the regular marketplace, you get less than that. So this bond is attractive but McDonald's is not going to sell it to us unless they can true it up to the actual market rate. And in order to do that, they're going to have to actually sell it at what we call a premium, which is anything greater than 100%. So, for example, you could look at this as 1.04, and if you multiply across, you would see that the bond holder would have to pay 1040 for it. So what's important to note is that as far as the corporation and as far as the bondholder goes, it doesn't matter if it's sold at face value at a discount or a premium, because regardless, you're always going to get the market value, the market interest rate um, at the end of the day. So next we'll learn how to take what we've just seen here and 
put it into journal entries.